Hey viewers, I'm gonna split this video in two. I finished filming the initial first take and it was almost 30 minutes long. Here's part one. Hi all, Emily here. I'm so excited to talk to you today about hearing aids and how they actually work. I am shining some light on hearing aids, what they can do, what they can't do, and four myths that just need to go. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Subscribing is the biggest thank you you can give to me. Let's get to it. Whether you wear hearing aids yourself, love someone who does, or are just curious to know how hearing aids work, this video is for you. It will help you understand what's going on in these tiny yet powerful little devices. We heard of hearing people live in a world built for hearing people by hearing people. So understanding how hearing aids work can make you a better advocate for yourself, for your loved one, or just in general. If you are a new hearing aid wearer or thinking about getting them, hopefully this video helps you set more proper expectations for your hearing devices and your experience wearing them. Okay, let's start about what's actually in the hearing aid. Now, what's in the hearing aid really depends on the type of hearing aid that you have. I have a behind the ear hearing aid, and so all of my processing or all of the mechanics are in this back part of the hearing aid behind the ear. So in my model, in this back part is a microphone. The microphone is where all the sound is pulled into the hearing aid. So everything that's going on around me, all the sound, the microphone picks them up. Some hearing aids have multiple microphones up top and on the bottom to better determine where the sound is coming from. This allows the hearing aid to adjust accordingly. Next, within the hearing aid is an amplifier or processor. This is like the brain of the hearing aid. The microphone sends the sound to the amplifier or processor. In the processor, it says, okay, here's the incoming sound. Here is Emily's hearing loss. How can I adjust this incoming sound to Emily's hearing loss so that she can understand it? The amplifier and processor decide what sounds to make louder, what sounds to reduce, and how to filter everything in real time. So it's really important that the amplifier and processor is incredibly fast because this whole process from the microphone, taking in the sound, sending it to the amplifier and processor, and then getting it to my brain has to happen almost instantaneously so that I can keep up with what's going on around me. Once the amplifier and processor has processed the sound, it sends it to the speaker. The speaker sends the sound down the tube and into my ear so that my inner ear and brain can process the sound. The speaker is also called a receiver. It can be behind your ear in a BTE or behind the ear hearing aid, or it can be in the ear mold or in the canal of your ear if you have a receiver in the canal hearing aid or REC. I personally wear a behind the ear hearing aid, this model right here. So my speaker or receiver is in the back of the hearing aid, sending the sound down the tube and into my ear. The last part that's in the back of this hearing aid is a battery or rechargeable source. I have a rechargeable battery. You can see the charging port right there. And so that is what powers my hearing aid as I charge it each night. Can you believe all that tech fits right here? And it helps me adapt to the hearing world. If I would have been born 50 years ago, my life would be so different. I am so grateful for my hearing devices. I do wanna point out that I just highlighted the four main parts and components of hearing aids that most, if like I wanna say all hearing aids should have. Um, there are other features that hearing aids could come with, including Bluetooth connectivity, this is one of my favorites. The older version of that is a telecoil. Hearing aid manufacturers are starting to phase that out, but lots of telecoil connections are still available in a lot of theaters and locations like that. So telecoils aren't totally obsolete and they work in locations that Bluetooth connectivity may not be available in. I actually recently went to a play that only offered telecoil connectivity. So even though I have Bluetooth in the latest and greatest, I can connect directly to the actors' microphones. Lots of modern hearing aids are also offering noise reduction features, directional microphones, like I mentioned earlier, and wind and noise feedback features. 
I remember when I got my first BTE Slim 2 hearing aid and it had a noise reduction feature. That was life changing. It was so nice to be a runner and go on a run and not have the wind constantly in my hearing aids. My runs became more rejuvenating and I didn't realize that until I had the cool technology. Yes, hearing aids are tiny, but they are incredibly smart devices. Okay, so let's talk about what hearing aids actually do. They take in the sound and reshape it according to your hearing loss. They're like an additional brain, essentially. The idea with the hearing aids is your ear is not receiving the right sound information to send to your brain. So your hearing aid adjusts that. It takes the sounds, factors in your hearing loss, and then increases the volume of certain sounds and pitches to fill in those gaps so that your brain is receiving more proper or more robust sound information than it was compared to what your ear was sending on its own. So hearing aids amplify sounds you're missing. They reduce sounds you don't need to hear like background noise and feedback. And it's really important to note that hearing aids do not amplify all sounds equally. This is a huge distinguisher between a hearing aid and an amplifier. A hearing aid is a smart device that processes the sound according to your hearing loss program. A hearing amplifier increases the volume of all sounds, and it's not a good fit for many people with hearing loss. Hearing aids also use a process called compression. It means that they take the sounds and compress it into a range that you can hear. So if I were to put this hearing aid on my hearing husband, and I've actually tried it before, um, it's super loud. It sounds really weird to him. It's because the hearing aid is taking in all the sounds, amplifying it to my moderate to severe hearing loss, which is actually incredibly significant volume increasing. And it doesn't amplify everything equally the way that he hears things. So the way that he hears is not the way that I hear. So let's talk about kind of a, an example here. If you have a high frequency hearing loss, I do, this hearing aid will take in the sound of someone talking and it will increase the volumes or compress the sound for consonants at the ends of words like S's, T's, D's. I typically don't hear the ends of words. Um, I just hear them truncated. And so sometimes if my hearing aids aren't working properly, I start talking like that. But the hearing aid will take someone's speech increase the volumes and the pitches and the sounds at the ends of the words and adjust for my hearing loss. It's important to note that hearing aids cannot restore natural and normal hearing. Also, it takes time to adjust to each hearing aid. The brain has to receive the signals, interpret them, and adjust accordingly. And every single time I get a new pair of hearing aids, it takes me three to six weeks to get used to my new pair just because it processes sound differently compared to my old device. So if you are thinking about getting hearing aids or you have new hearing aids, be patient with yourself. I have been wearing hearing aids since I was four months old and I still have to adjust every single time I get hearing aids. And when I say adjust, I mean it's an emotional process. Like crying, more exhausted, things like that. And that's not just because I'm a woman. That's because my brain's in overdrive trying to adjust to a sensory experience. So don't expect perfection, expect improvement over time. Okay, let's talk about four hearing aid myths. I wanna put these myths to rest. So that wraps up part one. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you can know when part two comes out. Thanks so much for watching. Stay strong, stay amazing, and have a great day.